Vin Bonventry from Albany Law School, thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's great to be with you, Dan. So, Vin, what would the Supreme Court look like with Amy Coney Barrett on the bench? She's been characterized as a conservative justice, obviously, but I'm wondering broadly, what would the Supreme Court look like if she joined their ranks? Well, you have to remember, we just lost Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was perhaps the most politically liberal member of the court. Uh, Amy Barrett looks like she's going to be one of the most conservative, politically conservative, justices on the court. So instead of having four liberals on the court, you now have three liberals on the court. And instead of having, you know, five conservatives, four of them very conservative, you will now have five very conservative court uh, justices, which means that the justices, the conservative ones, won't even need Chief Justice Roberts to get a fifth vote. That's really, really um, that's really going to shake up the court. So let's look at her record on the bench, which I should mention for our viewers is not very long. She was appointed to the Seventh Circuit in 2017 by President yep. Trump. Before that, she was largely in academia for most of yep. her career. So let's start with immigration. What do we, because I think that's going to be one of the top issues yep. that the court looks like looks looks at over the next couple of years. What is she in terms of a judge looking at immigration? Is she more prone to side with undocumented immigrants? Um, or does she have any experience ruling on that? Well, Dan, when I say politically conservative, remember, I say that advisedly. I do not mean judicially conservative. I right. mean, she talks about originalism. But, you know, originalism is in the line with strict constructionist. Oh, I'm a textualist. Oh, I'm a judicial restraintist. You know, now it's I'm originalist. Okay, that's just code for socially and politically conservative, which is why the social and political conservatives want her. Her record, to the extent that she has one, and she actually has a pretty uh, large record to date. She's written over 100 opinions, many of them dissents. With regard to immigration, even when her court supported immigrants, she dissented against the right of immigrants, whether it was immigrants having a hearing or whether it was immigrants uh, complaining about due process rights. She's a consistent vote against the immigrants. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that, that's what I mean by politically conservative. Think of how a politically conservative Republican politician would vote on many of these issues. That's the way she seems to be voting. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody unless you're really gullible about this originalism stuff. So is it the same with abortion? I know a lot of people are yeah. concerned about Roe v. Wade and whether having her on the court and if a yeah. case that includes abortion gets to the Supreme Court that she would essentially um, uh, write on the opinion that Roe v. Wade should be overturned. Uh, is that where she is as well? Yes. there. Are two major cases uh, in which she participated while she was on the appellate court. And in both cases, she was in the dissent against abortion rights. One of them had to do with whether or not in prohibiting abortions uh, for juveniles, uh, for uh, women who were not yet adults, whether they could have a judicial bypass, go to a judge instead of the parents, go to a judge who would say, yes, this is definitely justified. The court said, yes, you need that judicial bypass. Uh, judge Barrett said, no, not even the judicial bypass. And then with regard to whether or not someone who wants an abortion, a woman who wants an abortion, wants one for several different reasons, may the state government say, well, you can't have an abortion for this reason, this reason, this reason, or that reason. The majority of the court threw that out, said that was unconstitutional. She voted in favor of it. So we have two major abortion cases. She voted against abortion rights both times. Not only that, she has written and spoken against Roe versus Wade. Are there any 
Easter eggs about Amy Coney Barrett. Are there any decisions or writings that she has done or uh, written that may not line up necessarily with a conservative ideology? Does she have anything, I guess, special out there that's hiding? You know, we don't know yet. We don't know yet, and I know that there is concern about the fact that she's apparently a charismatic Catholic. Well, does that translate into a Catholic who's very, very dogmatic? So you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. Or is she going to turn into a Sermon on the Mount Catholic? We don't know exactly where she is. We know she's a very devout Catholic. Is she going to be dogmatic? Or is she going to be a St. Francis and a Sermon on the Mount Catholic? I look forward to seeing that. To tell you the truth, I don't know, and I don't think anybody else does either. You know, Republicans are obviously going to uh, confirm her. They're planning to. It's not a sure bet, but they're uh, planning to confirm her. The big controversial part of this, I think, is that this is happening right before a presidential election, during an election year. Give us the precedent for this. I know, obviously, in 2016, Republicans blocked Merrick Garland from being confirmed. Um, He was President Obama's nominee that year. But looking back through history, is it typical for the Senate to block these kind of nominations during a presidential election year, or um, have they not had trouble with it before? Okay, first of all, I mean, let's not be surprised that some politicians might be hypocrites. I mean, come on, give me a break. Uh, I'm not sure that the Democrats wouldn't do the exact same thing if they were in power. In terms of precedent, well, you can go all the way back to near the beginning of the Republic when the second president, John Adams, actually appointed the chief justice after he had already lost the election to Tom Jefferson, right? And so it was just a few days before Thomas Jefferson was inaugurated, right? that uh, his, uh, that Adams' appointment, nomination to be Chief Justice, the great John Marshall, he was confirmed and he was appointed. So, I mean, come on, you know, I mean, you know, when it goes against you, you become very, very pure. Oh, how could you do this? I mean, the Constitution allows Trump to do this. The Constitution allows the Republican Senate to do it. The Democrats lost the election four years ago, these are the consequences. I don't like it, I think it's unfair, but who said politics is fair? I've never said that of you. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point. Uh, Vin Bonventry from Albany Law School, thank you so much for being here. Hey, great to be with you, Dan.